Good evening, everybody. It's the Dark Comic Nerd again, and I'm going to try to fix this, guys. It's driving me crazy that it doesn't look like the resolution... Uh, or not resolution, excuse me. The focus was a little off, and I think I figured out what it was, so I fixed it. My apologies, guys. So, we're back doing a nerd showcase, guys. We're looking at some of the stuff that I managed to get during Christmas. One of which was the Karibo. At least I think I gave myself that Karibo during Christmas, but it could have been... Um, during a different um, trip. And the thing is, is that it just got mixed in with the Christmas stuff. And that's why we couldn't find it when we were doing the Yu-Gi-Oh! 25th anniversary stuff a while ago. So I'm happy to say I found it and we're going to go over that real briefly. And we just got a smorgasbord of stuff here, guys. Um, in the back there, we have a Sora from Kingdom Hearts. And we're just going to go over a little bit of some of this stuff that I think at least was here around Christmas even if it wasn't bought specifically for Christmas. So, um, it's just me trying to get through the stuff, guys. Uh, we got many other things to do, and I'm going to try to get through them a lot more often. Um, I've already done my Minecraft for the day. Well, at least for the time being. Um, and the thing is, is there's not much else going on. Um, so I decided, hey, why don't we just get some of the stuff out of the way? I should be doing my taxes or any number of other things I got going on. But you know what, guys, uh, I'll just, uh, put that on the back burner for a little bit longer. It's, it's not like I owe any money, so I can put that off a little bit. Now, um, what we do have, guys, is, uh, we have the camera currently set to, what was it, full HD, 30 frames a second. So, unlike some of the previous videos where I was testing some of the camera and especially how much space these new resolutions were taking, the 8K, guys, for a video that was less than 20 minutes, 10.52 gigabytes, I think, it was insane. I'm never doing that again if I can help it unless I have a particular need. Maybe I'll do a garden video or two, but... Uh, my garden videos tend to run a little bit long. If I was going to do a short one on maybe a flower, maybe. But not these. Um, taking up way too much space. Um, I'm going to see how the 30 frames per second full HD goes, guys. And then we'll see if maybe in the future we'll do it in 60 frames. Um, for right now, um, both the 8K and the Ultra are just way too high. And I think overly unnecessary. And it, I, I think I tested those and came to the positive conclusion that frig no. Uh, and that's what it came to. So in the meantime, guys, we're going to actually, um, we're going to drop the two front ones. And we're going to talk about the Sora one. So that way we can get the bigger of the two out. This is one of those big ones, guys, that has the backdrop on it. And in this case, it's the backdrop to the first Kingdom Hearts game, guys, so it's like the original poster. Um, I wanted to say I thought I saw this at Walmart at one point, but it says it's a GameStop exclusive, so I'm gonna presume that I never saw it there, and I'm just imagining things. Um, sorry about the light glare, guys. If I shut it off, it pretty much does this. So, we can for the moment while we talk about it, guys, but, um, for the most part, I'm going to be keeping the light source on, and my apologies about the glare. Uh, the reason I didn't get up and turn the overhead light on is, first off, it doesn't offer a ton of light. And two, the minute I get out of my chair, the cat thinks I'm going to go feed her, and then she will incessantly bother me, and I wanted to avoid that. So, um, so as far as this goes, guys, it's like I said, is a GameStop exclusive. It is one of those um, ones that you see a lot kind of all over the place um with the backdrop and uh, usually it's the cover of the video game it's based on or if it's based on a movie it's like the movie poster which you see a lot of those um it's pretty much the same as you know all the other ones you guys might have seen except this one is a GameStop exclusive um as far as um uh in the Funko Pop line of stuff guys I have a bunch of Kingdom Hearts Funko Pops, just tons, and we'll go over them sometime. I thought I would go over them all in one shot, but there's far too many of them, and I want to space it out so I can make some more videos, so I can actually make multiple videos on it. So I'm going to try to organize them in the group sometime, and then we'll do them by a certain sequence, and I think I know how I'm going to do it. Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, though, this one's unique, guys, so we're going to do this one separately. 
Uh, now, in the meantime, we're going to turn the lighting source back on uh, so you guys can get a much better look at the poster behind it and the Sora figure himself, which is just the one from the very first game, just with him holding the, the Keyblade guys. Nothing too fancy. I like that little pose that he has. Um, and I really do like what they did, uh, where they gave him what looks like his own platform. And I'm sure for any of you that have stuff like this, this is not unusual. But you can see based on the fact that this is pop, and if I tap on it, this is a hard plastic case. This is not your typical flimsy little plastic. This is hard plastic, guys. So hence the reason it's got a bottom on it, and it's got that fancy backdrop on it. So um, these do cost a little bit more money. I don't remember how much this actually cost me, but it will cost you a little bit more money because it does have a special oversized hard plastic case to keep it safe. But hey, I don't have a huge problem with that. I, I really don't. So just to give everybody a side shot, not looking too bad. Um, <clears throat> and then on the back, guys, a much better look. Oh, actually, we'll, we'll take a look, guys, there on the side. That'll give you a much better look at Sora. Um, keep in mind, like I said, guys, that's Sora from the first game. I have multiple Soras from multiple games. And there's what the poster looks like, guys, as far as the backdrop goes. And that is what the original game looked like. And it was really well done. And they did a great job with the artwork for that, in my opinion. Um, right out of there at Square Enix. So, fantastic job, guys. And this is number seven, I would assume, in a line of these, like, Maybe specifically based on video games, or maybe just in general, it's the oversized ones with the backdrops. I don't honestly know, but <clears throat> if you ever are looking for this one, number seven is the, is the lucky number, guys. Um, I think we'll skip to the next special one, guys, which is this Rita Repulsa, which is a Funko... 2023 Summer Convention Limited Edition one, which meant that the original... Um, one before they put out to the mass market came out specifically in a limited quantity over at, um, well, maybe not limited quantity, but at least it wasn't out for very long. So maybe so, not so many, how many they put out, but for the time period it was, hence the limited edition. Cause I, I, I could misconstrue limited edition as being limited quantity, but it also can mean a limited amount of time. So, the thing is, is that this was put out during the summer convention, guys, <clears throat> last year. I usually don't get that many Power Ranger Funko Pops. But, on the off chance that I ever get a bunch of Power Ranger Funko Pops, I thought it was good to have at least one of the villains. And the Rita Repulsa, guys, considering it's limited from what I could tell, um, I thought was a great thing. And um, I think they only had one of these left at GameStop where I picked it up. So I was like, dang, I'm, I'm grabbing that. But we'll check it out, guys. She has her wand. <clears throat> As you guys remember from the Power Rangers TV series, Magic Wand, Make My Monster Grow. So Magic Wand, guys. And we'll try to see as much as we can of it. They did a good job with it, with the color scheme and stuff. Um, if we can get a good look at it without it. It's trying to focus in on the sticker, but... We'll try to show you guys. They did a good job with that. <clears throat> and the overall figure is done really well. I thought they did a good job capturing what the villain from Power Rangers from the first the first three seasons, was it? Two, three seasons. She was the only one. Um, and there's a lot of um, stuff behind that, guys, because we used um, Sentai footage which is the original Power Rangers from Japan. But the voice actress that did Rita P Repulsa, later on, as we got out of using Sentai footage and we actually used the real Rita Repulsa that we had here in America, they did a pretty good job. And her voiceover was on the voiceover for the original stuff that came out from Japan as we dubbed it. And overall, the actress did a great job. And it was funny because... Um, she came back to do her voiceover in the Once and Always Ranger special they did on Netflix, which the only disappointment I found about that is that they did take uh, opportunities to virtue signal and put some woke propaganda in there that was not necessary. And I think they knew what they were doing, uh, plugging it in there, knowing that um, young children were going to watch this. Now, basically, there's some adult themes as far as death and some other things in that. So I would imagine most people that were watching that were people like myself and my friend um, Big Jeff, or uh, as I like to call him, Brother Jeff, who um, he 
was uh, noting the same things I was. And that's uh, another whole story. Um, I try not to bring up too con much controversy on here because I get, especially nowadays, because I get a lot of new viewers over the old viewers, and I don't want to stir up trouble. Um, if I ever wanted to, I could really offer my opinions, both as a Christian and as, um, uh, well, sometimes I could keep both of them separate if I wanted to, but they're not usually mutually exclusive. Um, because, I'm sorry guys, but my faith has a lot to do with what I believe in. Um, and frankly, um, I've seen a lot of God's good grace on me, uh, personally. And back when I was married, um, he did a lot to help me and my wife. We would literally sometimes see money appear out of nowhere from people that, um, just were incapable usually of giving money. Um, so the thing is I've seen too much. Um, and, uh, I, I've seen some good and some bad, uh, but, I'm sorry, guys. I am a strict believer that the Lord is out there uh, waiting for us. And the thing is, is that um, he is definitely, gu I, I believe he is guiding where we go in life. And the thing is, is that that teaches me a lot of the kind of person I should be. And if I wasn't the kind of person I am, guys, we probably wouldn't be doing these videos. And I probably wouldn't be um, the lighthearted person that I am nowadays. <clears throat> and, um... I, I uh, uh, said something to that effect um, today when we were having some more controversial conversations about stuff, and um, that was at work, and I said, well, it's like Deadpool says, sarcasm, because murder is bad, <laughs> and there you go, guys, that's where you leave it, um, but I personally do not like some of the virtue signaling stuff they, they put into a lot of our shows nowadays. It is unnecessary. It brings down the ratings. It doesn't help anybody. And the only purpose it really does is to make a small group of people in um, America, because this is not for other countries, because they don't put up with this crap. They don't put up with this crap in other countries, usually. They say, if you're going to put this in there, you're not coming over here. And then the companies suddenly go, oh, we can take it out for you, oh, honorable masters. And, uh, yeah, that's just, it, it, the virtue signaling is exclusively here in America, to which I say all all um, entertainment companies, go pound it. Uh, you you go, go stick your head right back up your keister. I'm sure it'll fit back up there where it was when we found you. Um, I'm sorry, but the virtual signaling and, uh, wokeness that they put in stuff nowadays is just terrible because it's unnecessary. It's there only to make certain people feel better about themselves. It wasn't in the original stuff. Uh, let me think about this guys. In the original Power Rangers <clears throat> that came out of Japan, did they have such woke things? No. They didn't, and it did great, and it survived all the way to this time. So why do we need to put it in? And the answer to that is, we don't. And there we go. I'm just, that's all I'm going to say, is if we didn't, if we needed to put it in, we would have put it in before now, and we don't. So, boom, mic drop. So, oh, that gives you a much better look at the, the wand, guys. Um... Yeah, I, her her one had feathers. It was a lot of feathers in the original thing. So it, seeing as hard plastic is kind of weird. But there it is, guys. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 1349. And like I said, this is a limited edition summer convention one. And you guys have seen me actually do that with Yu-Gi-Oh! ones before. So apparently the summer convention, they put out a lot of goodies. And going on with Yu-Gi-Oh! guys, the final one will be Karibo. So this is fourteen fifty five, guys. It is part of the lineup where we looked at it last time with the Time Wizard and um, Joey Wheeler and all those other ones. So we currently have that one, now that, that one, and that one. So we're only missing two. And of course, it makes sense that they're Kaiba and Yugi because they're the most popular characters in the darn show. So that makes total sense. So not much to really show on Karibo, guys. He's in the, even in the anime, he's just one big puffball. One of the unique things that they do have with this particular Funko Pop is he's got his own stand because in the show, he tends to always be floating. So in this case, they gave him a little stand so he actually looks like he's kind of up in the air. And I actually do like that. Um, and it's weird because Karibo has 
<clears throat> gone, depending on which anime he's in, from a light-hearted little bouncing character that is just a cutesy little puffball um, that when the card, if you have the card, it's in your hand. If somebody tries to direct attack you, you can discard the card in your hand and you take no damage. That's the big thing about Karibo. Um, now, they've come up with supplemental cards like a Multiplication where you can actually use your Karibo along with that particular card to actually create tokens to defend yourself on the field. The kicker is in the um, anime, they tried to always make Multiplication as if it was a card that would allow... Uh, multiple Karibos <clears throat> and you didn't have a limit. Uh, that's not how it works in our thing. You have a limit. You can only put as many as you can in, in your monster zones. Um, but they've also made the character in the movie and a few other things. They've kind of made him like this. And, and he was in the original games, guys, for the Game Boys and such, where he was kind of a really scary monster with really razor sharp teeth and he looked like something out of the Langoliers which uh, Brother Hamill and a few other people might actually get that reference if you've ever seen the Langoliers movie that they had on TV that was uh, done by Stephen King um, <clears throat> he looked pretty scary and he didn't look like the cutesy little character like this and he was a little more of a uh, mean monster and they've done that from time to time but most of the time in the anime and in most media they've made karibo this cutesy little um uh how should i put it he's not the headliner character for yugi like um dark magician <clears throat> but he's in there in the top five so um you tend to when a lot of people think Yu-Gi-Oh, um dark magician tends to come up first um then there's karibo uh some people think summon skull i usually put the summon skull more in association with um his grandfather because he was the one that used him most of the time um uh, i'm trying to think um i know if i thought about a dark magician girl that's another one that just right up there um <clears throat> but there's probably some other ones if i thought about it um but a lot of these characters guys um they were more prevalent and they were a lot more useful when they were doing the first season of the anime because then all the card rules we have in reality didn't matter it was it was they they did weird things like karibos on contact with things would explode um they've never really done anything with that um in the card series so but the character itself guys i like the fact that they went with the cutesy version with the big eyeballs and everything like that and i i thought they did a good job with that and just to give you guys another side look, or actually for the first time, the side look, guys, and getting a chance to look at the back feet, guys, where they did a good job with that, and it looks a lot like the card. Um, <clears throat> they've done a lot of supplemental things with Kribo, or made multiple. Kribo has been another one of those characters, guys, that for years, they've made variations of him in Yu-Gi-Oh! series all the time. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a variation right up through the first main three. Um, I think there's is one in the 5Ds, I'm not sure, but I know there was a Wind Karibo, definitely, in the GX series. And he's made supplement reappearances, um, though not so much in the anime, but the card game itself has finally given us um, stuff like the Karibo Brothers, um, which were this uh, unique group of multicolored Karibos that could then form other monsters. Um they used that in the later seasons. Um, I believe that was used in like s part of season four, if I'm not mistaken, um, where they brought about um, the Great Leviathan and they brought this stupid Oracalco seal and all that stuff. Um, if I remember correctly, um, that should be the one and a half of, of season four. Because season four was that. And I think the big tournament they did, um, which is typical for most seasons, they would do two different storylines a lot of times. Um, and they did a bit, they did an extra bit of stuff with Karibo at the time. So there is a lot to the character. It's just that um, I doubt we'll ever see it in the Funko universe. Let's just put it that way. A winged Karibo, that wouldn't be too bad though. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this run of... Funko Pops that we've done today, guys. This has been another nerd showcase from your good friend, the Dark Comic Nerd. And the only thing I really want to add <clears throat> from a spiritual aspect today, guys, is 
is that I've been watching a lot of media guys of varying things. I've seen what's going on in the country of America, which is my country. I've seen what's going on in other countries. <clears throat> and I've seen how people want us to, in this country, to support a lot of other countries, which depending on circumstances, that isn't such a bad thing. However, some countries, they do bad things with the money that we sent them. And so, Oh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, guys, real quick, like, is just that, you know what, guys, it's good to, the Bible says it's good to abstain from the appearance of evil, <clears throat> which means if you receive something from somebody that going along with the scenario we've set up for you guys, and then you look like you're doing bad things with that money, um, that doesn't look good. And I can tell you one thing, if the world doesn't judge you, when the end comes, the Lord will definitely judge you. So I believe that most people put the fact that the world, you know, the judgment of popular opinion, uh, the judging of the masses or whatever that stuff, they think it's more important than what God thinks. And it's like, <laughs> no, I would be more scared of what God is going to do to judge you. Trust me, because <clears throat> he's going to be the, the massive judge at the end of all judges. So I would worry more about what he says and what he thinks and what his word says. So a lot of people, they do bad things. Um, and some people don't mean to do bad things as far as they don't want to make it look like they're doing bad things on purpose. But they do a pretty good job of doing it anyway. Our current president here in America does a really great job at that. He tends to really stick his foot in his mouth a lot. Um, I would believe that some people could argue that the past president stuck his foot in his mouth a lot and still does. Um, I think some people are more hypocritical of that than others, but it's a very divided country that I live in, guys. It really is. But thank goodness it's only political and not with people using weapons of mass destruction or war weapons or whatever you want to call it. They're not out there beating each other with clubs, at least not yet. Um, but yeah, we tend to have a lot of people that probably think that they're doing good things. Uh, like, for example, there's been some pastors lately that think they're doing good things. And in reality, they're very confused and they're they need to turn to the word and go back to the word and read it for what it really is. Possibly even the Hebrew word, the, the word in Hebrew so that there's no, there's no misinterpreting it and that they know that what they're doing is wrong and they turn from that. That's what we call it. Repentance is to turn away from guys to, is, is to um, usually ask the Lord for forgiveness and turn away from, but, that's what these people need to do. All of them. And a lot of us need to do the same thing. But today, guys, not only would I recommend talking to the Lord, if that is something you're comfortable with, and asking for forgiveness, maybe even going to people you know and asking for forgiveness. That might be a first step towards um, being a better person. But one of the things I want to stick to is Avoid the appearance of doing anything bad. We like to say down here, avoid the appearance of impropriety, but that's a pretty big word. So I'm going to just stick with avoid the appearance that you're doing anything wrong, guys. Um, even if you mean it by accident, when you do it, if you're going to apologize, don't blame other people. We like to pass the buck. Take responsibility Say that you're sorry, and even if the other person won't forgive you, or you think if you get the impression that they still are thinking less of you, keep in mind, guys, that the Lord will never think less of you if you apologize to somebody, guys, over something that was a mistake. Um, now, if you meant it intentionally, well, you need to go to the Lord about that, guys, and that's a whole different ball game, and the Lord will talk to you about that. But if you didn't mean it intentionally, and you didn't want to give the impression appearance of being a certain rotten person just remember there's no harm in asking forgiveness guys and even if the other person won't give it at least you know the lord will give it to you guys so but yeah avoid the appearance guys that you're doing anything wrong today because in this world especially the way things are lately 
it's pretty easy to get the impression that some people are doing bad stuff. And the problem is, is with all due respect, they could just be really stupid. So that's it for me, guys. I hope that you're having a great evening. Please enjoy your Monday, guys. And if you're not, well, pray to the Lord, guys, and maybe something good will happen. You never know until you try. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for joining me on my Nerd Showcase tonight. And I hope that I will see you guys again shortly.